Lysander Spooner January 19, 1808, to May 14, 1887, was an American political philosopher, essayist, pamphlet writer, Unitarian, abolitionist, legal theorist, and entrepreneur of the 19th century. He was a strong advocate of the labor movement and severely anti-authoritarian and individualist in his political views. Spooner's most famous writing includes the seminal abolitionist book The Unconstitutionality of Slavery, and No Treason, the Constitution of No Authority which opposed treason charges against secessionists. He is also known for competing with the U.S. Post Office with his American Letter Mail Company, which closed after legal problems with the federal government. Topic. Life overview Spooner was born on a farm in Athol, Massachusetts, on January 19, 1808, and died on May 14, 1887, in Boston. Spooner advocated what he called natural law, or the science of justice, wherein acts of initiatory coercion against individuals and their property, such as taxation, were considered criminal because they were immoral, while the so called criminal acts that violated only man made arbitrary legislation were not necessarily criminal. Topic. Early years Topic. Legal career Spooner's activism began with his career as a lawyer, which itself violated Massachusetts law. Spooner had studied law under the prominent lawyers and politicians John Davis and Charles Allen, but he had never attended college. According to the laws of the state, college graduates were required to study with an attorney for three years, while non-graduates were required to do so for five years. With the encouragement of his legal mentors, Spooner set up his practice in Worcester after only three years, defying the courts. He regarded the three-year privilege for college graduates as a state-sponsored discrimination against the poor and also providing a monopoly income to those who met the requirements. He argued that no one has yet ever dared advocate, in direct terms, so monstrous a principle as that the rich ought to be protected by law from the competition of the poor." In 1836, the legislature abolished the restriction. He opposed all licensing requirements for lawyers, doctors or anyone else that was prevented from being employed by such requirements. To prevent a person from doing business with a person without a professional license he saw as a violation of the natural right to contract, after a disappointing legal career and a failed career in real estate speculation in Ohio, Spooner returned to his father's farm in 1840. American Letter Mail Company Being an advocate of self-employment and opponent of government regulation of business, Spooner started his own business called American Letter Mail Company which competed with the U.S. Post Office. Postal rates were notoriously high in the 1840s, and in 1844, Spooner founded the American Letter Mail Company, which had offices in various cities, including Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York. Stamps could be purchased and then attached to letters which could be sent to any of its offices. From here agents were dispatched who traveled on railroads and steamboats, and carried the letters in hand bags. Letters were transferred to messengers in the cities along the routes who then delivered the letters to the addressees. This was a challenge to the United States Post Office's monopoly. As he had done when challenging the rules of the Massachusetts Bar Association, he published a pamphlet titled, The Unconstitutionality of the Laws of Congress Prohibiting Private Mails. Although Spooner had finally found commercial success with his mail company, legal challenges by the government eventually exhausted his financial resources. A law enacted in 1851 that strengthened the federal government's monopoly finally put him out of business. The lasting legacy of Spooner's challenge to the Postal Service was the three-cent stamp, adopted in response to the competition his company provided. Topic. Abolitionism. Spooner attained his greatest fame as a figure in the abolitionist movement. His most famous work, a book titled The Unconstitutionality of Slavery, was published in 1845. Spooner's book contributed to a controversy among abolitionists over whether the United States Constitution supported the institution of slavery. The disunionist 
Faction, led by William Lloyd Garrison and Wendell Phillips, argued the Constitution legally recognized and enforced the oppression of slaves as, for example, in the provisions for the capture of fugitive slaves in Article 4, Section 2. More generally, Wendell Phillips disputed Spooner's notion that any unjust law should be held legally void by judges. Spooner challenged the claim that the text of the Constitution permitted slavery. Although he recognized that the founders had probably not intended to outlaw slavery when writing the Constitution, he argued that only the meaning of the text, not the private intentions of its writers, was enforceable. Spooner used a complex system of legal and natural law arguments in order to show that the clauses usually interpreted as supporting slavery did not, in fact, support it, and that several clauses of the Constitution prohibited the states from establishing slavery. Spooner's arguments were cited by other pro-Constitution abolitionists, such as Jarrett Smith and the Liberty Party, which adopted it as an official text in its 1848 platform. Frederick Douglass, originally a Garrisonian disunionist, later came to accept the pro Constitution position, and cited Spooner's arguments to explain his change of mind. From the publication of this book until 1861, Spooner actively campaigned against slavery. He published subsequent pamphlets on jury nullification and other legal defenses for escaped slaves and offered his legal services, often free of charge, to fugitives. In the late 1850s, copies of his book were distributed to members of Congress sparking some debate over their contents. Even Senator Albert Gallatin Brown of Mississippi, a slavery proponent, praised the argument's intellectual rigor and conceded it was the most formidable legal challenge he had seen from the abolitionists to date. In 1858, Spooner circulated a plan for the abolition of slavery calling for the use of guerrilla warfare against slaveholders by black slaves and non-slaveholding free Southerners, with aid from northern abolitionists. Spooner also conspire ed with John Brown to promote a servile insurrection in the South, and participated in an aborted plot to free Brown after his capture following the failed raid on Harper's Ferry, Virginia. Harper's Ferry is now part of the state of West Virginia. Although Spooner had advocated the use of violence to abolish slavery, he denounced the Republicans' use of violence to prevent the Southern states from seceding during the American Civil War. He published several letters and pamphlets about the war, arguing that the Republican objective was not to eradicate slavery, but rather to preserve the Union by force. He blamed the bloodshed on Republican political leaders, such as Secretary of State William H. Seward and Senator Charles Sumner, who often criticized slavery but would not attack it on a constitutional basis, and who pursued military policies seen as vengeful and abusive. Although he denounced the institution of slavery, Spooner recognized the right of the Confederate States of America to secede as the manifestation of government by consent, a constitutional and legal principle fundamental to Spooner's philosophy. The northern states, in contrast, were trying to deny the Southerners that right through military force. He vociferously opposed the Civil War, arguing that it violated the right of the southern states to secede from a union that no longer represented them. He believed they were attempting to restore the southern states to the Union, against the wishes of Southerners. He argued that the right of the states to secede derives from the natural right of slaves to be free. This argument was unpopular in the North and in the South after the war began, as it conflicted with the official position of both governments. Topic. Views on economics and self-employment Spooner believed that it was beneficial for people to be self-employed so that they could enjoy the full benefits of their labor rather than having to share them with an employer. He argued that various forms of government intervention in the free market made it difficult for people to start their own businesses. For one, he believed that laws against high interest rates, or usury, prevented those with capital from extending credit because they could not be compensated for high risks of not being repaid. If a man have not capital of his own, upon which to bestow his labor, it is necessary that he be allowed to obtain it on credit. And in order that he may be able to obtain it on credit, it is necessary that he be allowed to contract for such a rate of interest as will induce a man, having surplus capital, to loan it to him, for the capitalist cannot, consistently with natural law, be compelled to loan his capital against his will. All legislative restraints upon the rate of interest, are, therefore, nothing less than arbitrary and tyrannical restraints upon a man's natural capacity amid natural right to hire capital, upon which to bestow his labor. 
the effect of usury laws, then, is to give a monopoly of the right of borrowing money, to those few, who can offer the most approved security." Spooner also believed that government restrictions on issuance of private money made it inordinately difficult for individuals to obtain the capital on credit to start their own businesses, thereby putting them in a situation where a very large portion of them, to save themselves from starvation, have no alternative but to sell their labor to others, and those who do employ others are only able to afford to pay far below what the laborers could produce, than if they themselves had the necessary capital to work with. Spooner said that there was a prohibitory tax, a tax of 10%, on all notes issued for circulation as money, other than the notes of the United States and the national banks which he argued caused an artificial shortage of credit, and that eliminating this tax would result in making plenty of money available for lending such that, "...all the great establishments, of every kind, now in the hands of a few proprietors, but employing a great number of wage laborers, would be broken up, for few or no persons, who could hire capital and do business for themselves would consent to labor for wages for another." Anarchism. George Woodcock describes Spooner's essays as an eloquent elaboration of Josiah Warren and the early American development of Proudhon's ideas, and associates his works with that of Stephen Pearl Andrews. Woodcock also reports that both Lysander Spooner and William Batchelder Green had been members of the Socialist First International. Topic: <laughs> Later life and death. Spooner continued to write and publish extensively during the decades following Reconstruction, producing works such as Natural Law or the Science of Justice and Trial by Jury. In Trial by Jury, he defended the doctrine of jury nullification, which holds that in a free society a trial jury not only has the authority to rule on the facts of the case, but also on the legitimacy of the law under which the case is tried. This doctrine would further allow juries to refuse to convict if they regard the law by which they are asked to convict as illegitimate. He became associated with Benjamin Tucker's anarchist journal Liberty, which published all of his later works in serial format, and for which he wrote several editorial columns on current events. He argued that, "...almost all fortunes are made out of the capital and labor of other men than those who realize them. Indeed, except by his sponging capital and labor from others." Spooner died on May 14, 1887, at the age of 79 in his residence, 109 Myrtle Street, Boston. Benjamin Tucker arranged his funeral service and wrote a loving obituary, entitled, Our Nestor Taken From Us, which appeared in Liberty on May 28, and predicted that the name Lysander Spooner would be henceforth memorable among men. Topic. Influence. Spooner's influence extends to the wide range of topics he addressed during his lifetime. He is remembered primarily for his abolitionist activities and for his challenge to the post office monopoly, which had a lasting influence of significantly reducing postal rates. Spooner's writings contributed to the development of both left libertarian and right libertarian political theory in the United States, and were often reprinted in early libertarian journals such as the Rampart Journal and Left and Right, a journal of libertarian thought. His writings were also a major influence on Austrian school economist Murray Rothbard and right libertarian law professor and legal theorist Randy Barnett. In January 2004, Laissez-faire Books established the Lysander Spooner Award for Advancing the Literature of Liberty. The honor is awarded monthly to the most important contributions to right libertarian literature, followed by an annual award to the winner. In 2010, Lava created the Lysander Spooner Book of the Year Award, which has been awarded annually since 2011. The Lava Awards are held annually to honor excellence in books relating to the principles of liberty, with the Lysander Spooner Award being the grand prize award. Spooner's The Unconstitutionality of Slavery was cited in the 2008 Supreme Court case District of Columbia v. Heller, which struck down the federal district's ban on handguns. Justice Antonin Scalia, writing for the court, quotes Spooner as saying the right to bear arms was necessary for those who wanted to take a stand against slavery. It was also cited by Justice Clarence Thomas in his concurring opinion in MacDonald v. 
Chicago, another firearms case, the following year. Publications The Deist's Immortality, and an Essay on Man's Accountability for His Belief", 1834. The Deist's Reply to the Alleged Supernatural Evidences of Christianity", 1836. Constitutional Law, Relative to Credit, Currency, and Banking", 1843. The Unconstitutionality of the Laws of Congress, Prohibiting Private Males", 1844 The Unconstitutionality of Slavery 1845. Poverty, Its Illegal Causes, and Legal Cure", 1846 Illegality of the Trial of John W. Webster", 1850 An Essay on Trial by Jury", 1852 the Law of Intellectual Property", 1855. A Plan for the Abolition of Slavery and to the Non-Slaveholders of the South", 1858. Address of the Free Constitutionalists to the People of the United States", 1860. A New System of Paper Currency", 1861. A Letter to Charles Sumner 1864. Considerations for Bankers, and Holders of United States Bonds", 1864 No Treason, The Constitution of No Authority 1870. Forced Consent", 1873 Vices Are Not Crimes, A Vindication of Moral Liberty", 1875 Our Financiers, Their Ignorance, Usurpations and Frauds", 1877 Gold and silver as standards of value, the flagrant cheat in regard to them. 1878. Natural law, or the science of justice. 1882. A letter to Thomas F. Bayard. 1882. A letter to scientists and inventors, on the science of justice. 1884. A letter to Grover Cleveland, on his false inaugural address, the usurpations and crimes of lawmakers and judges, and the consequent poverty, ignorance, and servitude of the people. 1886. Two treatises on competitive currency and banking. See also American philosophy Individualist anarchism List of American philosophers Market socialism Mutualism movement. Natural and legal rights Topic. References Topic. Further reading Barnett, Randy 2008. Spooner, Lysander (1808–1887). In Hamowy, Ronald. The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, CA: Sage, Cato Institute. pp. 488–90. DOI: 101435 n297 ISBN 978-1-4129-6580-4. LCCN 2008,009,151. OCLC 750,831,024. External links Lysander Spooner. Org, dedicated website Works by Lysander Spooner at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Lysander Spooner at Internet Archive Works by Lysander Spooner at LibriVox public domain audiobooks. Lysander Spooner's Bibliography at the Wayback Machine archived April 12, 2003 Lysander Spooner at Find a Grave